Okay, so this lightning talk is like, uh, like I said, uh, enabling multi-cluster low balancing with Gateway API and Envoy Gateway. Uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Carlos Fai. I'm a software engineer working at Kubernetes. Uh, I'm living and born, I was born in Gdansk in Poland. And yeah, I'm also an Envoy Gateway maintainer and uh, I've been doing works around Kubernetes and open source contribution uh, for six years uh, in many projects. And um, now I'm working at, towards a KCP project. Um, so yeah, let's start. As we all know, like Kubernetes networking is quite advanced, uh, uh, different requirements and, and possibilities uh, imposes some use cases that we needed to solve. And we uh, started adding more and more layers to accomplish those things. And one of my favorite uh, image about that is this one. So we kind of sometimes forgot where is the application in all of this. But like I said, today in the Lightning Talk, I would be talking only about the two top layers, so load balancer and ingress mostly, um, because this topic is a pretty much advanced, so I wouldn't have that many time to, to uh, talk about it all. So yeah, uh, let's talk briefly about it. So when it comes like a, to the public cloud load balancing, probably if you use like a only public cloud, this lighting dog wouldn't like matter to you because you will be fun. Uh, you will be in, like uh, content with what you have offered by in a single public cloud. Uh, so that means like you have probably in your cluster cloud control managers ma manager that watches for ingress service, like if you're using ingress or gateway APIs resources and having that controller uh, sets up everything and sets up the external cloud load balancer for you. But when we talk about on-prem load balancing, uh, the things are quite different because Kubernetes offers no load balancer implementation by default there. Uh, in the, if you have like a multiple clusters, it requires setup for every each of them. And also that applies for your gateway API controllers that you mean you need to uh, literally uh, set up every controller per every cluster. And also it involves hardware load balancers and that involves IP address management. So you get your networking uh, done properly. And if we take a look, I mentioned the ingress, but it's worth to mention that uh, about the gateway API. So. Uh, probably you saw the previous topic, but let me let me just refresh that. Uh, it's a CNCF initiative, and it's coming emerging standard for ingress traffic. It's managed by Kubernetes SIG network community, so the one that pushes everything related to networking in Kubernetes ecosystem and make decisions for it. And if we compare it, why we are talking, why are we adding another layer to the networking? Is it that it's not really the case? Because if you remind, if you remember the ingress had some issues and one of those was like a limited functionality out of the box. Uh, all features probably needed vendor specific configuration. And that was also configured by great number of annotations. I don't I don't think if you recall like some Nginx uh, controllers or HI proxy had two hundreds of them. So that was a lot of um, like a bit of headache, especially if you wanted to migrate from one solution to another. And right, yeah, currently it's like a frozen feature. So every new feature is also landing on the Gateway API side. And why Gateway API is awesome? First of all, like it's it introduced like CRD based APIs. So everything like it's an object, so it should be quite easy to move uh, between different environments. And it has a proper multi-tenancy support. You can place your resources in any namespace. Uh, it's also role oriented. so. You can define your, let's say, multi-cluster or organization la layer and think of like uh, having a gateway class at the top layer and your gateways is placed in different parts of your organization. Also, like it's flexible and extensible. You can easily, easily add a new APIs or ways to uh, accommodate your environment. And of course, it's coming open standards. So uh, this is uh, also really great. Um, yeah, and one of those implementation of Gateway API is Envoy Gateway. Uh, it started in 2022 and is designed to manage Envoy Proxy as a standalone or Kubernetes application gateway. And like 
it, it was mentioned already, it's really extensible. It supports multiple use cases and it has like all it's needed to uh, get your uh, traffic going for your Envoy proxy. And also like the, the really great for us was like a many deployment modes that it supports. You, you can really deploy it in different flavors in your specific namespace in the same namespace. Uh, you can have like a multiple Envoy gateways controller in your cluster. So that's that's really also a great benefit of running this. So when we, when we started to think about in Kubernetes, we uh, manage a lot of clusters across like a different providers. So we have like a, a lot of like multi-cloud environments. So we started to think how to manage like our load balancing uh, properly. And we thought like uh, we need a dedicated load balancer cluster. We've built up a centralized management plane. And for L7 traffic, we chose like to run the fleet of Envoy gateways that will manage all the traffic for uh, specific cluster or customer, like uh, whatever it's name, but uh, for us, it's a, we call it like user clusters. And that will work across, like, uh, like I said, different providers, uh, whether public cloud or on-prem, or it's like a completely Kubever clusters, which uh, are uh, virtual machines. So we come up like a, with a QPLB, it's an open source project. Uh, here is like a definition, but what I like wanted to say about it, uh, it's not only like a so software based load balance password, it's essentially is a pair of uh, Kubernetes controllers. So it consists of a QPLB agent, which is basically a CCM and QPLB manager that will sit in the manager cluster and uh, orchestrate everything to get your data flowing. Um, so yeah, when it comes to architecture, like I said, in managing clusters, you deploy a QPLB manager and it comes with its separate Envoy control plane. And if you have like your tenant cluster, you install the agent, which is the CCM that watches for specific resources and synchronize between uh, tenant cluster and managing cluster sets up an, its own namespace with like isolated routes and resources that it manages. And if we take a look at how it works with L7 load balancing, so let's start with deploying our LB cluster and tenant cluster. Uh, we deployed uh, the QLB manager on, in LB cluster. Uh, we set up a gateway class and we deploy Envoy gateway. Uh, we now want to connect the tenant cluster. So we deploy the QLB agent CCM connected to the QLB manager, and then we can start uh using it for our workload so what happens if we deploy example backend service and backend application uh and we want to expose that via the, via the gateway and http road what happens like a kubelb uh, agent uh in watches for these resources see that it's started what it does it creates a special copy of the service on the noteboard and it creates in the, it syncs with the LB cluster and talks to the QLB manager that, hey, we, we have these resources up and running. We want to now connect to, connect to it. So it, QLB manager picks it up, create a QLB CRD route and, and could like starts the flow with the Envoy gateway. Uh, what will happen next is QLB manager uh, reading from the CRE road, that's essentially a copy of the resources that was uh, implemented here in the tenant cluster. So gateway, uh, API gateway and HTTP road. It replicates those resources in specific uh, tenant namespace and cr create a specific tenant LB Envoy deployment. This is like a QPLV internal. This is only for uh, routing uh, the traffic. And it, it it also sets up the XDS control plane for it. And also we use the bridge service, which is like a cluster IP, IP for handling the traffic between Envoy Gateway and the tenant uh, LB pods. Um, so yeah, what's happened next, Envoy Gateway picks up the configuration of uh, gateways and HP road and start its own logic. So any anything like um, specific to L7, is handled by the Envoy Gateway because we didn't want to interfere with this like big solutions that already has like all batteries inside the Envoy Gateway. So how the traffic flows, um, we added like additional hub, but in this case, we also separate the 
the multi like uh, multi tenants with, with with each other and we can handle like a specific use case per per like each tenant cluster so the traffic flows via the envoy infra we then we uh, use the bridge service to reach to our envoy and then like these envoys are configured in the in this xds and here is like a specific cluster and listener which is basically pointing the service to the to the node port like the node port on the specific node in the tenant cluster and that way the traffic reaches the the backend port so yeah like about the trade-offs um so we, we like let's say like first of like a negative sides more uh so running dedicated lb cluster means one more cluster to manage and scale uh and i agree initial setup it can can be like a bit more complex than handling like only by the cloud provided lb uh and also like it requires a new operational mindset but like i said it's this architecture of kubelb is like an hub and spoke which is like a network centric uh architecture where the management cluster is a hub and spoke are the each tenant clusters so the the, the control plane and data plane is also in your lb cluster so that scale uh needs also be included uh, on handling your lb cluster so monitoring governments and security must be done there but like the benefits we, we thought like we, we we found that separating the kubelb and envoy gateway proxies also brought a value in operating and scaling is and isolating multi-tenants it also was easier for us to offer new traffic features because we offload to this to the envoy gateway and also like handling certificates and dns by exposing like self manager or extra dns was way way more easier with uh, having it in centralized uh, lb cluster so this this really outvived the, those challenges uh, in spe like a specific scenario where you run for example uh, on prem clusters and also public cloud and also the, it comes like ecosystem benefits so we are using like a gateway api standard uh, we don't use the that many low balances solutions, just one platform, and it can integrate with both like Ingress and also like, like I said, for L7 Envoy Gateway. Uh, we adopt the open source ecosystem, and it's also like I said, more, more convenient setup for organization. Uh, so both like using Gateway API for uh, properly set up the organization, as well as uh, the uh, like uh, architecture with LB cluster and tenant clusters. So yeah, that's will be all. I hope you give it a try. Here are the links and also my contact details. Um, thank you. I think we have just about time for one question before we just say, and that question is, do you send endpoints for the tenant service to Cube LB, or do you use a single IP port for all endpoints? And Carol, if you feel like that question is too big to answer in like 20 seconds, you can say, I'm going to answer that async. Uh, yeah, I, I think like, yeah, we set the endpoints. So we use the endpoint slice for that uh, bridge service and we send that uh, to the specific IP endpoint, which is a single one. So the, the cluster configured in our XDS is uh, is a like specific IP and, and, the, and the port. So this is how we do it uh, between like Envoy Gateway and, uh, and the KubeLB XDS. Well, thank you, Carol. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. And if, now I'm going to hand over to Katerina and Takeshi. So thank you. Thank you very much.